If anyone were to ask me, has it been worth it, this career of mine, in terms of sacrifices, separations from family, struggling with nerves, being a public figure, um, public judgment, I would say no, it isn't worth it. But as a way of life, to be an artist is the most terrific privilege in the world, I think. So this is the last day I shall ever live as an operatic singer. We've been renting this little flat in Brighton all the weeks since we started it at Glyndebourne earlier on in the summer. We're packing it up today. We're then going to drive, as we've driven so many times in the last weeks, Keith and I, my husband, through Brighton, over the Downs, skirting Lewis, to Glanbourne Opera House. And tonight, after the performance is finished, we're going immediately back to London. And as we take that journey into the night, it marks the completion of the full circle which this year has been. Since last September until this moment, this has been the final season of my life which contains all the elements of performing in it. That is my concert work, my recital work and my opera work all mixed up together. This is what my life has been for the last 25 years and what it will never be again because the operatic element will be missing. I've always been the sort of performer who's been guided by instinct. Instincts to do the kind of music that I do in the places that I do it. And when we saw this year of our cest at Covent Garden, Mary Stewart at the Coliseum, and finally Orfeo at Glyndebourne, I had this instinctive gut reaction. This is a perfect way and a perfect time to bring my operatic career to a close. This new production of Alceste at Covent Garden is the beginning of the season. And the moment has come for all the people involved in it, John Copley, who is the producer, Sir Charles McCares, who is the conductor, Janine Rice, our French coach, the whole team to meet together. I've been memorizing the score for a year. I've been living with the score and living with the, the character and the woman and the story of our test for a year. Thank you very much. Because of the, the kind of life every singer leads, I can't spend hours and weeks and days and months sitting at the keyboard with the, with the score. I have to take it in a train or in a car and uh, it, it just sits on my lap and at every opportunity it's opened and I memorize more. I memorize the actual words and notes, put them inside my head, away from the keyboard. And then one comes to this point this morning, um, trying to improve the actual truth of the French because you can't yeah, do that unless really, you have the, the French-speaking person there. I don't think so, anyway. You can... And he is going to be with us all the time, correcting and, and helping us with the, with the actual pronunciation of the French and also the, the inner meaning of the language. I think it's... Because that is real, yes. That goes on, but it's no you. It's not you anymore. And once more...
a very tough part of the actual voice too, just at the part where one wants most power. There's this stupid break taking place. I don't know how to get over that vocally. Well, maybe you can do that stupid break here, if it helps. Because of the tessitura, maybe if you, if you feel... But not to do it the first That's time. That's the last time. Voilà. Okay, well, if he helps with the tessitura, I need it. Voilà. Mm. Mm. Okay, fair enough. That's a good compromise. <laughs> voilà. Um, this is a special thing because we're uh, alone and quiet and uh, we can talk about problems and sing problems in a way which is more concentrated than production. As soon as we go onto the production floor next week, there'll be a lot of other things to think about, a lot of physical things to do, a lot more people around, and we shall be going over the same bit uh, many times.